think we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to the webinar from Advanced Cell Diagnostics. My name is Sarah Agee. I'm Director of Marketing. Today, we'll talk about characterizing NGS discoveries in the context of tissue morphology. We have a guest speaker, Manoha Furtado, uh, who is the founding president of Biology for Global Good. Uh, he will be speaking later in the program on how to uh, synergize next-gen sequencing technologies with tissue staining in hybridization using RNA scope or uh, single molecule visualization of RNA biomarkers. First, I'm going to give a introduction to the uh, seminar. We're going to give an overview of the company and our core technology, uh, and then Minohar will continue with his presentation on um, the ISH as a complementary tool with next-gen sequencing. Our is a uh, company that's six years old. We incorporated it in, in 2006, actually. We are in Hayward, which is in the San Francisco Bay Area in California. Our uh, CEO, Ewing, and Steve, our co-founder, uh, started the company. Uh, previously, they started Panomics. Eileen Gonzalez and Shad Jin Ma, Tony Lam, and Chris Bunker round out our uh, executive management team. And we have Series B funding from New Leaf Ventures last fall. And we're ramping up our commercial operations uh, aggressively this year. This is our technology. Our scope is a comprehensive biomarker platform for visualizing any gene from any species in cells and tissues. As an example, you can use expression arrays. You can visualize the entire human transcriptome. But then you validate those genes in the tissues and cells from which you isolated the RNA in the first place. FIT and IHC are the two most used technologies. However, DNA FISH, you um, have some difficulty with some targets uh, that have transcriptomic readouts. This is a genome readout. And so in IHC, for many uh, low-expressed genes, it's very difficult to see the at the protein level and especially modulations and changes in their protein expression, as well as most antibodies in the human transcriptome uh, I'm sorry, most genes in the human transcriptome do not have antibodies that are either available at all or that are rated for doing immunohistochemistry. So in a scope, because it's a molecular method, it's a guaranteed assay. We can design probes for any gene, any sequence within two weeks. And we've also pre-designed probes for the entire human transcriptome. Uh, we have uh, over 1,000 assays currently available off the shelf and growing. A very sensitive assay uh, for for that's very simple to use, just like IHC, and it allows you to visualize the gene expression in the context of disease and microenvironment in the tissue. Um, we consider this as an alternative to to homogenization for doing RT-PCR or to synergize with that in your validation step. It can be the only option for as many as 25% of human genes. Which for which IHC antibodies are not available. The review of the technology uh, and the different steps involved. First, our our assay is applicable to tissues sections on glass slides. They can be FPE, formalin fixed paraffin embedded tissues. They can be fresh frozen tissues or cells that are cultured on glass slides. And soon we're going to be launching. A, um, a assay amenable to PBMC and hematological use as well. It can be multiplexed and any probe combination. And it can design these probe only goes in as little as two weeks. We have probes called double Z target probes. Each pair of probes recognizes the target sequence in the tissue. One pair is bound to the transcript. It serves as a substrate binding to the hybridization which we call the preamp, amp, and the labeled probe oligo in a BDNA-like hybridization series. So double Z target probes anneal specifically to this target sequence of interest. And they're 
as a point at which the preamplifier can hybridize to both of those double D probes. And then the amplifiers will hybridize to the pre and the labeled probes will hybridize to the amplifiers. And with this, you get a 400 fold signal. And we define Z probes along the transcript to as many sequence specific regions as is possible, loading the transcript with thousands of labeled molecules, resulting in single molecule detection. One thing to note is that if only one Z probe pair binds to a a non-specific target, no amplification will occur. And so not only is the technique high sensitive, preventing single molecule detection, also very specific, and there's little to no background. Slide demonstrating the single molecule detection sensitivity assay, and it's linear down to single copy level. Listen to conventional in situ hybridization, the signal is much more robust and more easily visible under low power microscope. And then if you were to look at this under a high power magnification, such as 40X, you see individual dots of RNA transcripts being labeled. And here you can see that with methods that radiograph exposure of 48 hours, and one would be amenable to a 10 minute chromogenic reaction with RNA scope. And you can see that not only is it more sensitive than the isotopic methods. It's also having less background and is more specific. Another way of showing the specificity of the assay is at the molecular level. And you can look at the molecular specificity of the assay itself. In this case, we're looking at HPV variants, the HPV 16, 18, and 45, which are known to be expressed in different cell lines. MS-751, HIA, CIHA, and Kaspersky cells. And so you can, we can design probes for the E6, E7 transcript in the HPV genome to these specific molecular subtypes, and we can get highly specific detection of individual subtypes in the representative cell line. As well, the analytical sensitivity and specificity of the assay confers in clinical research, um, clinical specificity and sensitivity as well. In this case, showing the HPV detection in HPV positive patients, uh, showing a comparison to RT-PCR methods with RNA scope, and you can see the superior specificity of the RNA scope HPV assay. That aggressive commercialization efforts. We've been expanding our product portfolio to meet needs in research scientists for basic research, translational research, drug development, and target validation, as well as clinical diagnostics in multiple areas. And we've expanded our product offerings as well, now having many target assays on our menu representing multiple species. We have manual and automated assays, and we have assay services as well as a quantitative analysis software called Spot Studio. And we have a global partnership collaborative network as well as customer base. And we're very well established at this point uh, with many high level partners. I want to turn it over to Manohar, who will view the synergies between RNA scope and C2 hybridization detection in two with how you can use that to characterize your NGS discoveries. Hey Sarah, so I'll take off from here. So what I did is put the slide up here to illustrate the point that uh, disease at the tissue level is pretty complex. Okay. In case of cancers, you have different cell types, you have uh, normal cells, uh, endothelial epithelium growing, and different levels of expression and kinds of things that happen in these different cell types. If you want an idea of what's going on at the tissue level in detail, this is specifically a technology that helps with that. In terms of NGS, we see RNA scope as being so in pre analytical qualification of the sample itself, and I'll give you some examples of that and post-sequence confirmation and more detailed characterization of tissue-level expression of RNA as well. 
compatible with the, uh, the RNA ISH technology. So, Sarah, if you could move it to the next slide. We learned a few applications where we feel the RNA ISH technology would have potential healthcare benefits to patients, like in this particular instance, characterizing Pongius results. Things you can do obviously is to characterize pathway migration, and you can do this if it's occurring in a few cells. And this could lead you to changes in gene expression levels within subpopulations within a tumor space that you have. You look at copy number variations, gene amplifications, and you can also detect novel fusion transcripts, anything that may be inhibited detected by other methods like NGS or high throughput analysis strategies, you can down into subpopulation levels using this method. It can also be used potentially as an adjunct to immunotherapeutics where you want the distribution of the target antigen that the therapeutic is targeting. They can get information on things like tissue infiltrating lymphocytes and the density of these cells and their influence on tumor response therapeutics. Uh, we can definitely find the contributions coming in from different cell types. And lastly, detection of red cells and biopsies in the liquid for monitoring therapy outcomes, detect animal residual disease, and any sort of interest disease looking for latent viral reservoirs, exam HIV. So the next slide, please. Again, from a strictly technology point of view, you could use a method for characterizing genomic discoveries, establishing gene expression analysis in the context of the cell level, detect uncoding RNA biomarkers, fusion transcripts, and things that are expressed in uh, red events in certain cells, which could be either circulating tumor cells or cells infected with virus or latent infection. Precise quantification is also a capability of the methodology, and we'll go into that in slides later. And we'll also give you examples of rapid translation of early discoveries down to the clinical application. Next, please. So, uh, one of the applications clearly in qualifying tissues or QSync as a pre article tool, what you hear on the left is cells that are stained for the HER2 expression marker. And below that, what, what you see is LCM mask that can be put on top of these tissue areas that have been selected to pick those cells up for further characterization by other high throughput methods and GIS. And on it, you see uh, the reverse of that in the sense that you're looking for cells that have lost speed and activity, and you can reach for cells that have lost this particular surface gene. Next slide, please. Example of how you can use the methodology to qualify pre analytically is what you on the left is an expression of uh, RNA polymerase 2 transcript. In a sense, is ubiquitous within cells, and essentially, you should be able to see this if the RNA is relatively intact uh, to the extent that it can be intact in FFP. So you don't see any expression, it's an indication of uh, extremely poor quality FFP tissue, and you may not want to take that further into any of your analysis. And on the right side, you see specifically uh, not the whole to expression. So if you want to select this particular portion for further analysis by other methods, you could uh, you could knock that out and collect that particular portion of the sample. Last slide, please. So one tool that is critical and illustrates this particular community very well is a, is a collaboration that we had at Genentech, where we're looking at the relationship between the expression of HIV and HER3. Uh, in, their, in, in their experiments, they were essentially looking for HER regulin, HER regulin expression as the marker for HER3 expression. What you can see here on the slides is uh, the yellow arrows pointing to basal cells or basal-like cells, 
and the red is pointing to squamous cell epithelium. So in uh, panels A and B, you have well differentiated um, uh, to where you can see a clear separation of uh, the expression of um, HIV, which is in a cyan color, the bluish color that you see here, and her three, her three that is in red. So clearly in panel A, you can see that the CHRG expression is restricted to the basal cells, and the HER3 is in uh, in the in a different cell population. Panel B, as you can you can see the different expression of these two transcripts in uh, in the cells and the other in uh, the septilium. What you see in C um, is a well differentiated. Uh, square cell carcinoma of the head and neck, where again you can see separation between the external of um, HRG and HER3. However, in certain types of tumors where you lost this, which is differentiated, you see autocrine expression and a, um, a cold expression of both HRG and HER3. So this was useful for them in terms of classifying different types within uh, within this, within the within the multiple types that they could see in squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck cancer. Essentially, uh, in their studies, what they were able to count out that is that in the absence of HRG, there is fairly consistent levels of expression of HER2, whereas if you have HRG expressed, there's a grade of HER3 expression, and it's mostly correlated with HRG expression. So they're able to use these technology to differentiate between two types and different and uh, the suggestion in this paper is that certain poorly differentiated uh, squamous carcinoma head and neck would respond to certain therapeutics that, that could block her three and, and that's their working model and they're moving ahead with this. But the idea here is to clearly illustrate the capability of the technology to look at different expression of transcripts thing that you will not get by using high throughput analysis like RT PCR or any of the methods NGS where you bring cells up and collect a, a total count. Next slide please. Another example we'd like to highlight that's an advantage of this particular technology is the detection of uh, non coding RNA species. Obviously, there's no antibodies uh, to target these RNA species. So, some examples here are P3, hot air, and LOX2, um, of transcripts where you, you encoding RNA. It's also useful where you have no genes where you don't have an antibody available, and spe especially useful for express ligands and cytokines and level expressing transcription factors. Slide, please. This example of a detection of a fusion transcript using a combination of ISH and flow cytometry, again, a collaboration with Beck and Dickinson. So what you see here is the, um, uh, probes that target both the PCR and the able portions of the PCR, able tra uh, fusion transcripts. As, as you can see, uh, the ables labeled in green, the BCR in red, and portions where you have a fusion transcript would appear as yellow transcripts transcripts where you have fluorescence coming from more populations, uh, designed with KBMCs and then actually mounted on, on a flow cytometer. And you can see below the quantification parameters where they could calculate uh, the BCR by itself, the ABLE, and the amount of BCR able in transcripts uh, from you know, flow technologies. The method is highly quantitative, and you're able to see uh, you would actually count at the cellular level. So next slide, please. An example of rare cell detection. This is a paper published by Payne et al. to look at circulating tumor cells in within the PBMC population. So essentially what you can see in a background of uh, filling cells, you're able to pick up a few circulating tumor cells using uh, markers specific for CTCs uh, generated that hybridize to uh, to pan CTC targets that will 
inside the cells, they're in circulation, particularly coming in from tumor cells. The other uh, key feature of this particular technology is that since we are not an A, yeah, uh, it'll pick up both CTC that are alive and target um, dead cells that have potential trust for not ready. So next slide, please. One example we start with highlight is uh, the validation of coding RNA, uh, coding RNA mutation that was discovered by DIVA study. So in a study uh, using a large panel of SNPs, uh, in the promoter region for the ferritin light chain was correlated with uh, in the eye, and this is obviously data coming out of a GVAS study. What the investigators wanted to do is try and see if there's any functional significance for this. So, design probes that would target this particular ferrite chain, and they used it in some insight to hybridization experiments that are highlighted in the next slide. Show that in uh, the eye, where you, you had a cataract, they could localize the non-coding eye, localize this particular transcript to um, sections of the eye uh, to indicate functional relevance. Again, next slide, please. When Sarah presented uh, this earlier, this is section number two in um, cells and, and a panel and a quantification graph where you can actually calm down to other cells that you see expressing HER2. If you go to the next slide, what you'll see is an illustration of our software that actually can look at these cells and give you the counts that you see in different cells. So if you see copies in cells described as between 0 to 1, 1 to 3, 3 to 6, and greater than 6, the external differences between cells cells expressing her can be deciphered using this technology so you get more granularity in terms of the results that you see. So that is available and along with the with the ISH technology to do site quantification. Next slide please it illustrates uh, not only the ability to precisely create material but also ML the ability to do high throughput analysis, the RSH method and the kit scan on and when automated system to give you more high throughput analysis. And what you see here is uh, the detection of specific targets like so again, and then the ability to export this data and analyze it quantitatively. And this was published in a 2013 paper in JMD. Um, sometime in uh, January. Next slide, please. This is the ability to go from early discovery. In this particular case, this was a study presented by Lisa Hoffman from CAP, where you could go from a kind of a discovery platform where you have an association with disease for about 20 genes in this case. They did two studies to narrow this down to a 60 panel and then came down to a three-gene three panel, which they were able to validate the expression of these assays in the context of the tissue and come up with an assay that has clinical sensitivity and specificity at the table level. The whole thing took about seven months in this particular case. Uh, typically, um, the around time from cancer diagnostics for new transcript essay designs is about two to three weeks. So, slide, please. So, we would like to point out that uh, when you use novel techniques to characterize genomic DNA, a lot of it now is coming from NGS studies, either of the whole genome or the transcriptome in RNA seq or copy of variation studies, you till end up with candidates that have uh, potential expression changes or new novel uh, changes that you want to further characterize. One technology that's going to be extremely useful for this is to design approach to these markers and be able to validate them at the tissue level and do that in a relatively rapid fashion so we can help with clinical validation of biomarkers. 
identifying potential therapeutic and then uh, also help with the tissue-based diagnostics and plant diagnostic assays. Next slide, please. In summary, the RNA scope platform, in our opinion, would be an extremely good complementary tool for NGS. As I alluded to before, it can do RNA detection and quantification, especially in the context of the tissue architecture, so you get much more information be used for biomarker verification for any gene and also model systems with our species that may be characterized for disease analysis. It's useful if you don't have antibodies that are easily available and the ability to detect low abundance markers and markers that you don't have good coding antibodies. Additionally, you have the capability to do non-coding RNA biomarkers as we, as we showed with some of the assays before. Precise quantification capability, the software, the ability to detect um, rare cell events, both for tumor and infections, and then application to disease where we had a couple of examples where we had association to HPV and uh, the health reactivation panels that we had. That's the last, last slide, but um, Sarah, you want to take here? Shana Han for your presentation. So that, if there are any questions that one has, um, Otherwise, we can wrap things up barely. I just want to announce that we are going to have another webinar in July on the 24th about multiplex fluorescent RNA detection in cell and tissues. Where we will have a guest speaker, James Mansfield from Perkin Elmer, who will discuss applications of the nuance detection and imaging technology for solving issues that come up with visualizing multiplex assays in formalin fixed paraffinated tissues and uh, removing the background during the imaging and processing of those images so that you can achieve a single molecule multiplex detection of RNA. Thank you for attending, and we will see you next time.